Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week, we visit with the new owners of Freedom Kitchen at the Legacy Center. Then we went to the Senior Center Open House all today at our Community Access. Welcome back. If you remember that the Legacy Center had a restaurant called the Fuel You Life Cafe. Well, it has changed owners and the new restaurant is now called Freedom Kitchen. With this story is our reporter, Terry Stiles. Terry? Hi, Bill. I'm at Fuel Your Life Cafe at Legacy 925. It looks familiar to you and maybe everybody else, but it is no longer Fuel Your Life Cafe. It is Freedom Kitchen. And I am with Dr. Keith Brennan. He's one of the owners, and I'm with Lisa Genza. Genza. <laughs> I can't get those names straight. Don't go away, though. We're going to hear more about them and what's going on here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I am at Freedom Kitchen with Lisa, and Lisa is a health coach. We talked a little bit earlier, and you talked about paleo food and keto food, right? That's yeah. one of the focuses that you will have here. So tell me what your mission is here. So as a health coach, I've been teaching people how to eat healthier or eat what's right for them. And what I have found is that many people benefit by taking away refined sugars and refined yeah. grains. Sure. And there's a lot of confusion about what is paleo, what is keto, what is Mediterranean. And we try to limit that confusion and just make really good, tasty food um, that's, that's healthy for people. They often just find that by changing their diet, they can reverse a lot of ailments and they feel a lot better something they don't don't dread eating i know a lot of people that go on diets just dread looking at one more salad <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um you know when i teach people about food i teach them how to swap some healthy food and it tastes really really good so we'll have you try some things today too just like we had dan try one of our millionaire bars because it's gluten-free grain-free refined sugar-free wow. dairy-free and it's amazing wow. So are these recipes that um, you have done research on or you're coming up with them yourself or how do, how do you come by these recipes? Well, we're very fortunate to have Carol Murray back as our kitchen manager. So she was with Fuel Your Life before. Yeah. So she's been working with me. Um, so I'm paleo, keto, she is vegan. Um, so between the two of us, we've been working on the menu. Um, but it's, you know, I've been teaching for a while and it's really a matter of swapping out one ingredient for another without losing taste. And so often people hear, well, if it doesn't have sugar or wheat or gluten, mm -hmm. it must taste terrible. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone will find that the healthier food actually tastes better. And so the paleo and keto, that um, seems to be new in, on the scene, but it's not. Uh, the paleo goes back to caveman, right? Absolutely. It's just like yoga. Yoga's not new either. It's been around for 5,000 years, right? So paleo's been around. It, it, Paleolithic times, it, that's what we have to look at how our body it has been um, created. And it's we were meant to eat nuts and seeds and plants and meat, but we weren't eating bread or pasta. We weren't eating dairy and we weren't eating sugar so paleo is nothing new it's um it's really the way we're meant to eat keto is more of a new fad but that's been around as well you know south beach diet the zone diet atkins we understand that getting into nutritional ketosis has a lot of benefits there are some people maybe going to extremes right now, uh, but when when you're eating paleo or possibly even Mediterranean, you're in nutritional ketosis. You're cycling in and out of ketosis. The goal isn't to stay in ketosis. The goal is to cycle in and out of ketosis. And ketosis means what? So we have two sources of fuel. Mm -hmm. We have glucose and we have ketones. Most of us are only aware of glucose, um, but our liver will produce ketones when we're not circulating glucose but because where there's too many grains and sugar in the current standard American diet, 
then we're not producing ketones. So the goal is to foster an environment where the body will naturally produce ketones. And that helps your blood sugar as well, right? A lot of people, it seems like more people than I've ever heard of, has diabetes. Yes, so diabetes is definitely an epidemic with... With the, yeah, with the standard American diet being full of whole grains and refined sugars and refined grains, we're producing too much glucose and then producing too much insulin and then we become insulin resistant. So by going paleo keto, we absolutely will help stabilize blood sugar and insulin levels, which has enormous health benefits. Yeah, I've heard of a lot of people that lost weight, that had a certain amount of weight that they had to lose, and they had been diabetic, and then they, had, they got to get off of their insulin. So that makes sense. Type 2 diabetes is completely reversible. Wow. People go through my program, and they reverse that within 90 days pretty routinely. Um, what, we, what we need to do is stabilize blood sugar levels and then foster an environment where the body will produce ketones uh, naturally. And that just happens when we take away the refined sugars and the refined grains. Something so simple and really good. You keep saying Mediterranean food, which is my favorite, my all-time favorite. So it sounds like it's going to be really good. Well, I just love food. So (laughs) I I love, you know, Asian food. I love Mexican food. I love Italian food. Um, I'm Italian and Polish. So I love all food. So we will have, and I love desserts. So there will be plenty of treats and desserts and everything's healthy. I've been living this lifestyle for 12 years. I reversed a number of health conditions in myself. At 36, I had type 2 diabetes. Wow. It's completely reversible. My triglycerides were over 300. I had fibromyalgia. Oh. I was over 200 pounds. So I, when people say, you, you know, mm-hmm. you just don't understand, actually, I do understand. Um, so it, every condition can be helped when we improve our nutrition. So is that what set you on this path to helping others? Absolutely. Yeah, I walked away from a corporate career to then own a day spa where I was teaching people about diet and detoxification. So I've been doing this since about 2008. Well, Lisa, let me tell you how lucky I think that we are, that you're here. And I can't wait till you get things up and running. I know you're in the moving stage right now, but I can't wait for people to meet you. If you were standing next to her, you could feel her warmth and sincerity. So I'm glad I got to meet you. And now we're going to talk with Keith, and we might not be done with you. Okay. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, so I found Dr. Keith wandering around here, moving day by the looks of it. Are you overwhelmed? Uh, I'm not. I'm excited. Good yes. to hear. So what do you have to do now to be able to get in here? You want you have a goal date? Um, yes, we're going to try and open right after Labor Day. And we're going to do uh, some soft openings this next week. But we have a lot of moving pieces in uh, little odds and ends, kind of like someone moving into a new house. Right. What do you mean by soft opening? Um, we're going to have people come in and sample some of the food. So before uh, we are out to the community and the public here, uh, we can pass the uh, taste test and make uh, improvements wherever we need it. So it, the, the hours and the function of the business will be similar to fuel your life. So people aren't expecting you're only going to be open from 3 o'clock on. Or how is that going to work? Great question. So we're going to start off by being mostly breakfast and lunch centered uh, right from the early morning. So the cool concept for that that's going to be a little different than Fuel Your Life Cafe is we're going to have online ordering and we're going to have curbside service. So people can roll right down M24 and roll down their window after they've already ordered and we can bring out their breakfast bowl, power bowl and coffee right for them to keep on going to school or work or go enjoy uh, some retirement life somewhere, whatever they're doing. What a great concept. So then also, you uh, have talked, or Lisa has talked about having classes here. Oh, yeah. And what will, what will those entail? So we're going to have a variety of classes. We're going to have things with health coaches, with Miss Lisa and other health coaches in the area. We want it to be a big community thing. So we don't want to be the only ones teaching the classes. Um, so there'll be classes. We've had people in the building already saying, hey, we're a couple and we want to cook together. So few people these days know how to cook anymore. Um, So getting people back to some of the simple basics of how to cook together, and it's a night out, it's fun. We're also going to have pop-up chefs that are going to be putting their skills on display. And, uh, you know, you can learn from them or you can just come eat the food, depending on whatever you desire. Um, But there'll be specific classes for specific 
things like diabetes, arthritis, or just healthy eating. It, it's going to be a lot, a lot of different events going on. That's really Lisa and mine's passion is bringing fun events, things where people can socialize while learning. And of course, what brings people together better than food? Yeah. Well, it's an expression of love to begin with. Yes. So if you love your community and you're serving your community, um, people are intimidated at changing their lifestyle and starting with food. How can you get them over that? So that is great that you brought up that point. So that was the whole concept behind doing something like this is in my chiropractic office and in Lisa as a health coach, what percentage of people are ready to make the big jump to something like paleo, keto, Mediterranean? Almost none. A very small percentage, right? Unless they have some major health or you know thing going on, and even still, it's complicated. So I want to start bringing food to them that's yummy and tasty, so they can start realizing, okay, I can gradually eat some more of these foods, and. It's not the, oh, it tastes like cardboard, or this food doesn't taste good. I get a lot of, from the male crowd especially, is I'm a meat and a potato person. I can't eat differently. And I'm like, well, I love meat and potatoes too. <laughs> I've changed from white potatoes to sweet potatoes, and I still eat meat. So there's different times of year. You brought up the meat and potatoes. And I find myself in the fall wanting more of that mm -hmm. and wanting more of the squash and nuts and so how do you, do you work with that or do you work around that or am I listening to my body and that's a good thing? So those are the wonderful answers that people are going to kind of either experience here through just being here and seeing our menu or they can come and get more information through some of the classes. But yes, listening to your body is something that I'm glad to hear you might do. The average person doesn't listen so much to their body. Oh, yeah, we ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's part of uh, some of the teaching in the classes okay. too. And yes, certain times of the year, you're going to want different types of foods. And we're really going to uh, have different menu items that'll pop up depending on the seasons um, to kind of mm -hmm. contribute to what your body would want. And so how do we get the community to figure out when you're going to have those classes, how you're going to have those classes? Where are you going to have those classes? How do they contact you? Great, great question. So we're going to have a website with Instagram and Facebook for the people that know how to do that stuff. And so we're going to hire people to do that stuff because that's not me and Lisa's wheelhouse. Our wheelhouse is getting out in the community and meeting people and being at different events where we can talk to people. As crazy as that sounds these days with all the cell phone usage, we still like to talk to people. Um, so that's how we're going to get the message out there. But we'll have uh, things on our uh, our doors I mean that'll keep right. updated right. Um, and we'll send people to the right positions even we're gonna have this concept it's called table up where they can look right online and on their cell phone nice. and get updates right through there oh I love that I'm gonna be a part of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so you're at Legacy 925 so until you're set up completely we'll have people stop by and come and introduce themselves to you and Lisa if you're not here, they can figure out what's going on, but I'm really glad you're in the community. Yeah, thanks so much for welcoming us, and thanks for coming out. We're excited to be in this area. Me and Lisa also love all the lakes in this area, so we're excited to check a few more of them out. Yeah, you got one going on. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Come and meet these people. They're awesome. I just, I just want to sit in here and just chat with them for the rest of the day. Welcome to the Owner's Freedom Kitchen at the Legacy Center. Next up, we went to the brand new Senior Center open house. They had some great food catering from Connie's Kitchen, and our reporters had some great interviews from the instructors from the center. With this story as a reporter, Alexis Ware. Alexis? That's right, Bill. I am right next door at the Oxford Park and Rec open house and ribbon cutting for their Senior Center. We're gonna head inside and see what's all in store.
represent um, whatever Oxford Library has to offer. I'm running a raffle. Um, I have a lot of pamphlets that people in the community might be interested in, a lot of bookmarks, how to download a book. So that's kind of important for seniors. We have some pamphlets that have senior services. Maps of Michigan have been very popular. I ran out of a local food guide already. So I'm kind of just here to make my mark, let, us, let the community know that we're there for them. What do you think about the new Senior Center? I think the new Senior Center is awesome. This is my first time here, and I happened to stumble upon the open house. So I said, I want a table, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I can see it's going to be well-loved and well-used. What I am is the hostess for a brand new club that's called the Patchwork Friends Quilting Club. We, we're going to meet on the first Tuesday of the month. It's free, and you just bring some kind of quilting or sewing with you, so you can either bring your machine or you can bring handwork and you come and quilt and visit with a bunch of new friends who all enjoy quilting. Exactly. So it's exactly what it says in the title. It's a club for friends to come together and share their quilting ideas. Can you tell us how long it took you to do this one specifically? I saw a lot of people interested in this design. So one of the options that I we're doing for the club is if you want to do a charity block, this is our charity block that we're doing for the next three months and it's really um, straightforward. So you start with a square with strips and then you cut it in half both ways and you end up with a little plus sign block here and so uh, you just use fabrics from your stash or your scraps you have at home and if you want to sew one you're more than welcome to if you don't want to you don't have to all right I am here with some gentlemen can you tell me what club you guys offer okay we we offer a walking club here at the Oxford Community Center every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. and we walk about two and a half miles in total uh, and we enjoy after the walk a nice get-together coffee usually some uh, something to eat and uh, and just chit chat together and in a nice group activity now obviously exercise is important but can you tell me the main reasoning behind you two wanting to build a walking club here well, I think we want to promote health you know preventative preventative medicine mm -hmm. it's very cost-effective so we enjoy it we enjoy not only the physical aspect but the social aspect it's in quite nice we've met a lot a lot of nice people it's been very nice Ben can you tell us what your booth is all about I am offering tech help to the senior center uh, the first and third Thursdays of each month so really miscellaneous questions with technology and anything I'm happy to help and what was the, the inspiration behind making tech help with Ben so I actually ran a tech camp helping little kids this summer and so I noticed there was a lot of simple questions and I saw the new senior center opening in the paper and I thought well there's a good opportunity for uh, kind of a gap that needed to be filled with senior tech and since I have all that experience helping out kids and stuff I figured I would be a good person to help out at the new senior center. Tell us about your book club. The book club is going to meet every other month so it will be meeting in October, December, February and April and the first we will be meeting on Wednesday mornings uh, from 10 to 11 here in the senior center. The first book we're going to read is The Lake House by Kate Morton and the library has extra copies in their book club section and the people who come to the first discussion will decide what titles we're going to read for the other three sessions and they will vote so that we know that people are interested in reading those books. Hi everyone, hey I'm very pleased and proud to be here today on behalf of the Oxford Chamber of Commerce. As a board member of the Chamber of Commerce it's my privilege to be here today to be a part of this occasion on opening up the Oxford Parks and Recreation uh, Senior Center today and it's, it's, and it's my honor to stand next to, to Parks and Rec Director Ron Davis because I've known Ron Davis for a lot of years and this man has done a lot for this community and for the Parks and Recs Division and I'm proud that I can be here today to uh, witness him cutting the ribbon for this new center and everything looks great, everybody looks awesome. I'm going to hand it over to Ron. He's probably got a few things he wants to say about the Senior Center. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks for coming. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce some real important people that, that made this all happen. So our staff, uh, Carrie Hovis, just raise your hand. Lauren Smith, Don Medici, Dan Sullivan. Uh, we're fortunate to have some of our commissioners here tonight. Teresa Meyer, 
Tim Cologne and Ron Roop. They're our elected commissioners who oversee the whole operation of the Parks and Rec and kind of keep me in track. Just a quick recap how this all came to fruition. They sold the Vets Hall four years ago, I think it was, five years. Uh, so the seniors were kind of in limbo. And if you know me, uh, I've been here 25 years. If someone's in limbo, we're going to make something happen. So we stepped up to the challenge. Um, we knew there was a need. Where do we build it? How do we fund it? So uh, thankfully, the township board saw the need. They came to bat for us. They gave us $300,000. Um, we kicked in another 100000 out of our fund equity, and what you see is a reality of, of what we put together. Uh, it doesn't look much on the outside, but I'm not for the outside. I want stuff on the inside. It's, it's like the human body. It's what's on the inside that counts. So we're not here to win any architectural awards on the outside. Our goal was to put everything inside that we could, whether it's the computer labs, the flooring, the restrooms, the pool table, those types of things. Uh, we're going to have uh, horseshoe pits coming here probably the next month or two outside, shuffleboard courts, and bocce ball courts. So um, I'm also proud to say that we made our time uh, line, our budget. Uh, we use all local boys. Timmy Scribner Plumbing, Hartwick Electric, Cameron Well Drilling, uh, Day, uh, Mike Keene Floor Covering, Everybody that we used on our jobs were, were local boys, and that's something to say about our community. Uh, those guys wanted to give back, and they came in here after they'd worked a long day to work on this project because they knew how important it was. So a lot of credit goes to those vendors and those suppliers who helped us out so much on this. So this is your center, folks. It's going to be open every day that we can. Uh, Dawn is going to oversee it. If there's something you want, let us know. If there's something not right, let us know. Uh, the staff asked me when we were building it, how are we going to run it? I said, I don't know. I've never run a senior center. <laughs> but if we work collectively together, and I mean that sincerely, and you know me, I'll fix what I can. But if you don't tell me, I can't fix it. Whatever you do, don't go on Facebook. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Give us an opportunity to fix what we can. So if you have an idea or you have a program, Give us a call. We'd be more than happy. Again, it's your facility. We work for you. So to those of you who supported the millage last week, thank God. Thank God for helping us out because it was a do or die for this department. And a lot of people didn't think it was, but it was. So luckily with that passing, we're going to be able to do a lot of stuff in here that wasn't possible. We want to be able to do stuff for you guys at no cost or very low cost. And that millage helped us do that. So uh, bless your hearts on that. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thanks again for coming out. Have fun. Give us a call. Um, like I said, it's your facility, so I hope you like it. So thanks again. You ready? And without further ado, let's cut this ribbon and get this started. Room. All right. There you hey! Go. Congratulations. Thanks, Michael. We're open for business. with two lovely ladies. Guys, what do you think about the Senior Center? I love it. And it's in your home. And I'm 91 years old. Congratulations. And uh, I love bingo. <laughs> and what do you think? Oh, uh, wonderful. I've been here already for our, um, Steve Woods art class. And I uh, signed up for Set and Be Fit. Wow. And uh, I signed up for the book club. Cool. And I'm, I always played Scrabble over at Orient Township. And I'm hoping they'll have it. But yes. There are a bunch of games coming here pretty soon. So you might just get that, that wish. Can you tell us how you think this event went? I think it went awesome. It exceeded what my expectations. I was really worried that we weren't going to have too many show up. Um, we had HealthQuest and St. Joseph Mercy Oakland um, provide uh, part of our sponsors um, and provided marketing um, bags for everybody. And so um, I, I'll be able to get a count for sure to see how many people we actually gave out bags to. And that'll give us an idea of how many people participated tonight. But the room was packed and it was warm and um, I, I think everybody was able to talk to instructors or our volunteers that are offering programs and um, services in our facility and I think our guests got a lot of great information and um, we were able to um, engage
engage with those uh, volunteers and instructors so I think that was really uh, a great benefit um, and in addition we had um, Connie from Connie's Kitchen Z um, that also was one of our sponsors for the food uh, tonight and so I think everybody really enjoyed um, trying her um, products and hopefully we'll um, come back and maybe participate in some of her cooking classes so I think all around I think it was a, a great turnout and how many vendors did you have show up today and are there more yes um, I think 19 of our 28 vendors and or volunteers or I should, should say instructors um, or volunteers that are offering programs and services were here tonight so that was great and I also overheard you speaking with a, a young lady about volunteering her time to help some of the senior citizens here. Is that also something that you guys offer? Yes, we're always looking for people to come in to help and volunteer, um, whether it's in the senior center or it's one of our other um, everyday uh, you know, parks and recreation programs or services. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers. We can always put somebody to work. So, yeah. Is there any requirements needed for those volunteer positions? No, just time. <laughs> just the time. Um, they can be high school students, they can be adults, um, it, seniors, it, you know, we're welcome, our doors are open and, and everyone is welcome to come in and volunteer. Um, and you know, as far as the senior center goes, it's going to be really hard to see right out, out right away where, where, what that need is going to be and what's it going to look like. So um, I would just say, you know, sh share with us that you're interested in helping with the senior center. And as things start to get busy, and uh, then we will be in contact and asking, you know, whether it's to come out and help at the front desk or help come make coffee or help. Um, with stuffing bags or whatever it is, we'll, we'll know as, as time goes. That wraps up this ribbon cutting and open house. We're going to toss it back to Bill at the desk. Good job, Alexis. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So, for our reporters, Terry Stiles and Alexis War, and our camera crews, Dan Zweiss and Laura Race, and every better Terry Styles, I'm Bill Service. And oh, by the way, school is back. Don't miss all the high school sports and concerts every day, Monday through Friday, 4 to 6.30, and Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 6.30. Don't miss all of our local programs and our community access. And by you, you have a great, great week.